O'Reilly for the Muskegon Channel. This is Catherine Van Camp, and we have been talking in one of those secret conversations on the Facebooks and all that kind of stuff for a little while. We are here today at Pribusen. Pri it is in Muskegon. We are out here. This is where the Mars 4004 robotics team has been working. We've been following these guys for quite some time uh, with their uh, journey to the world competition with their big robot. We're going to show you a little f film of that right here. But uh, you, we've been talking a little bit about mobility for these young people. And the Mars team here in Muskegon has had a role in helping you guys out with some of your work. First of all, tell me about your organization and what you guys do. Uh, our organization is Michigan Kids on the Move, and we modify ride-on cars, um, electric cars, 6 and 12 volts, for children with limited mobility. That could be like health problems, yeah. physical problems. Um, sometimes it's just like a social issue where they, it, it creates a gap in that social barrier where other kids will come over and interact with them um, because they have that cool car. Um, and we also make mini wheelchairs for children. We started this program because we uh, have a son that's five, about to be five, okay. And uh, he has uh, stage four kidney disease and cerebral palsy, and he was having a hard time, and he was getting left alone outside a lot, and he would be sad about it, and I'd have to go and move him. And he'd get, you know, because he can't, by the time you move him to one spot, little kids, they're already in a totally different sure, spot. Sure, sure. So he was getting left alone a lot, and we found out about the Go Baby Go program, which is what our program was based off of, but we wanted to expand. So we did that and we built him a car and then uh, some of his friends, his parents, were like, you know, we'd love to have a car like that for our kid and there's no programs like that around. So we just started in our backyard and then eventually we connected with robotics teams in our area and it's been huge. And it grows. Spread fast. In a year we've done over 20 something cars and 10 wheelchairs now. No kidding. It's fast. I didn't expect it to go that fast. Nothing grows as fast as a mom that wants to get yes. her kid taken care of now, is there? Yes. Tell me about these cars now. Where, where do the cars come from? How are they funded? And what goes on to, to make this happen? Well, for the funding, we uh, we post the kids and their needs, what kind of car they're going to need, what kind of modifications, and how much that's going to cost. So then we go and we pick out a car that we think will be good for the kid, which is a lot of times, like a, um, depending on if they're going to be using it indoors or outdoors, because some of them use them inside to get around at doctor's appointments and that. Um, we'll go with a bigger car if it's going to be outside so they can go in different terrain. So it really depends on their needs, what we buy them. And a lot of the funding comes from families. Um, sure. They'll post that their kid needs this car, and members of their family will come in and donate. Uh, Kiwanis, the Michigan District 3, multiple groups of their Kiwanis have helped us out and supported us. We've had funding from AutoCraft. Um, it's a, they do 80-20. Okay. They provide all the 80-20 for our wheelchairs this year, so that was awesome. And uh, wheels come from handicapped pets. So it's been a lot of, a lot of people came together to do it, but most of the family have supplied something. Like yeah, I mean, if they get one car, they supply another one. Like another one kid, he got six hundred dollars in donations in an hour. I didn't even wow. have time to like update. But, like he's good. <laughs> he doesn't need no more because so many people donate it for yeah. him. So I called him on. I'm like, you know what do you want me to do? Do you want me to get him a more expensive car? She's like, no, no, get him a normal car and put the rest of the money towards another kid. So it's really been everybody's just been giving back and helping supply everything that we need. Um, and the cars, we start with robotics because my backyard is a big mud hole. Right. And um, we didn't have nowhere to store the cars as we were building them. And I like working with teenagers. I wanted to be a teacher and I wanted to be able to play. So this kind of does everything I wanted to do. I get to play with little kids. I get to teach teenagers. So it, everything I wanted in a career, I just don't get paid for it, which is fine. <laughs> I'm fine with it. But I don't get paid for this either. Yeah, well, yeah, I know, it's right? Fun. It, it, you know, it keeps me busy, and I can do it in my own time because sure. it's a fundraise, uh, fundraising, and I can do it in my own time because I have four kids. So it's, it's a great career move for me, even though it's just nonprofit. And I met a lot of great people and uh, the Kiwanis and robotics, and they have the teams and the materials in that need it, and more knowledge than I do. Sure. Um, they caught us a couple safety issues that I didn't, I wasn't aware of. Not a wiring guy. Sure. So they've been really great with that. Do you ever stop and think that, you know, I know when we talk, you you say things like, you know, I, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. But did you ever stop and think that? What you're doing, even by accident, is really changing the lives of a lot of people. You know, I didn't expect like, as big of an impact that it was had. I know it had a big impact on the kids, but um, as much of the community that's came in and yeah. being able to help with other teenagers and, that, and all the knowledge they're going to learn and the awareness it's bringing for different illnesses and stuff that I knew nothing about. Right. And then when I post it on my page, people are like, what is that? Yeah. So then they go up, and it's, so it's bringing a lot of awareness to a lot of different illnesses. And Did you plan on that? No. I just wanted to have fun in my backyard for the summer. Yeah. I was bored. I needed something to do. So, you know, I'm like, I'll make a couple. Yeah. And then it just went crazy. And you and turned now into I'm a president. You turned into a uh, haphazard hero. Yes. And look at the lives you're touching. It's, it's been amazing. Um, you do this all over the state? Uh, we've... <laughs> 
Petoskey does yeah. it too, so they pretty much handled like the UP area. Okay. Um, so we've pretty much been down here and we've had kids from up to four hours away come in so far. Wow. So that's why we're trying to expand it because um, we had a few families down here in Muskegon. I'm like, instead of having them come down here, I'm going to sure. call robotics down there and see if we can make something. It's a lot easier for me to drive three hours than it is for those families, all of those families, like sure. five families, sure. to come down to us. And then we're spreading the program here, so hopefully it'll stay here. And from the way it sounds, they're already asking for more kids, so I think they're going to continue it. I'm excited about that. Um, my plan is to have it all over Michigan within five years. That's my plan. And I can just work on my own county. Because mm -hmm. the more focused you can be on your county, the more you can provide for the kids, the more more you can put into the cars. So it's going to be more, and it's going to serve them better. I've done this for about 30 years, you know. Different radio and TV and all that other kind of stuff. I think I'm standing in front of a miracle you. with you. I really do. I think you are one of the people that can make things change. We've been working state. with the state, and, and you're so um, humble about it. I mean, I know that you're. I know that you, you. You just kind of see it as what you do day in and day out. But for somebody that's just meeting you and hearing what started this and why and what you've done with it. When I went to the first appointment, when I went to the first thing and I got the car too, I was just shocked that all the therapists in there were there. Like, you're, you're paying for this for your kid? I'm like, well, yeah, it's his money because he gets Social Security, yeah. you know. And they're like, well, not a lot of parents would do it. And I'm like. I'm like, yes, they would. I'm of like, you guys just gotta let them know. Sure. And I've seen it. I've seen it. As soon as I let people know, they're just unaware of these things. Yeah. Parents aren't aware of these things. So if you get it out there and you get on these um, support groups where parents are on and you let them know these services, they'll go for the services. Sure. There's just not a middleman that tells them the services. Right. And which is, I went to college for um, early childhood, so I know a lot of that. Yeah. I know a lot of the services, so I can also help parents with that, with like bikes and stuff. I've been helping parents get uh, reach different resources, so that's been nice too. It's been great. I, I, I love standing in the presence of greatness. Oh, I wanted to say too, um, we spoke with uh, somebody that's going to legislation about um, the reason we started the mini wheelchairs was because my son couldn't get a wheelchair before he was three. Yeah. He could get a stroller, but he can't push himself in a stroller, right. so I don't like that. Um, he needs independent mobility. So we found Bumble's wheelchairs. We didn't we didn't like their design too much. Um, based on my son's needs, it didn't, the chair didn't fit him, so we went with the Fisher Price chair. But in the meantime, we are working with legislators to try to get it to where Medicaid in Michigan has to pay for independent mobility devices before the age of three. So hopefully, I know that's going to be a long road, but hopefully in the next couple of years we'll have that covered and parents won't have to go through people like me to get a wheelchair right. that insurance should be paying for. Well, I might know a legislator or two. Oh, I'll see what I can do to be on your side. Yes, I guarantee I it. it. We're going to meet one of the families that's getting one of yeah. these cars here in just a second. This is what amazing. Thank you. Absolutely amazing. Look right there. That's the face of change right there, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a second to meet one of the families and take a look at some more of these cars. I want you to meet Travis. Did I get that right? Right. Got uh, that right? Lisa? Yep. Serenity, are you down there? <laughs> we see you down there? Wave. Say hi, everybody. There she is. Hi. And over here, this is? Mr. Ethan. Mr. Ethan. Tell me a little bit about Ethan. What's so going on over Ethan here? Ethan has spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy. Okay. Along with chronic lung disease and a whole list of things. We see about 15 different doctors. Oh. So... But he's our little superhero. I know. We've got one of those in yes. our family, too. She's got, a, she's got a thing called a taxi. Or okay, yep. You know what I mean? It's yep. one of these things that's just a big question mark over the whole thing. Yeah, well, we um, when we just spent um, the last month in the hospital, and um, genetics, actually, we have a diagnosis on him that does not have a name. So it's never been seen anywhere. Yeah. So he may, he's one of a kind. We always say he's going to have the Ethan syndrome, and that's what he's got. Well, there you go. <laughs> right. so tell me about Ethan. How old is Ethan? He is three years old. Oh, three years old so and is he I mean outside of the the things he's got going on is he a typical three-year-old um sometimes yeah he has his attitudes well yeah what three-year-old does it? and definitely right, right definitely he's definitely a daddy's boy yeah most yeah. definitely well today is a special day here because this Mars 4004 team has been working on a project for these guys right tell me a little bit about what's going on behind so us. he is getting a car a motorized car and power it is, wheels yes yes it is, it is um it's modified for him okay so it has Seat belts around his yeah, chest, so I mean, around the bottom part, and it has a button in front of him so that yeah, when so he pushes it, because he cannot hold sticks or anything, right. um, or push pedals with his feet. Right. So, and when he pushes the button, it can go. And then it also gives us the option to push the button as well. He's also got other buttons that make noise, car sounds, horns. Got right. some horn action going on there. Got so it's going to give him more. Yeah. Kind of yeah. We've got some footage of Ethan over here, and I want, I want you to take a look at this uh -huh. and just stop for a second and realize what joy comes 
when something that we take for granted is is given to a kid that may not have these opportunities, take a look here quick and, and see what I'm talking about. It's pretty amazing to see what this kid got. Talk about what this is going to do for him over the next couple of years. I mean, it's going to give him independence. He's going to outgrow this thing. Oh yeah. Well, for a couple years. Right? He's been pretty much the same size for about two years, so yeah. he might be able to use it for a while. But okay. it's going to give him independence. We're actually getting married here in the next 30 days, and we already have plans to use the car in the wedding. Do you really? But yes, it is. It's the main yep. thing right now. Everybody's waiting to see it. How about that? Um, but it, he, she rides her bike outside. Yeah. Um, it will give him more opportunities than just being stuck in his wheelchair. Sure. It gives him different things to do. Um, yeah, we can take it to the zoos and all kinds of different things. Here. Park. Everything. You go high Doctor's right down Sparta. Exactly. That's Doctor's right. They're from Sparta too. They know it. So it's a great place it's to go. It's going to give him a lot more opportunities. It's a great thing. Yeah. Talk about this. Is this a, a for a family? Talk about this. It's what amazing. This means to you. It's amazing. Um, I would have drove in hours for something like this. Yeah. This is oh, yeah, you we don't were, see we you don't yeah. see or find many nonprofit anything around for children with disabilities. Right. Um so when you do find them you, you wanna get on the bandwagon. Yeah. How'd you hear and about it? um we have an, a friend yeah. that is in a wheelchair who she was willing to her daughter outgrew the her car. Yeah. But Ethan couldn't do what yeah. she could do. So the car didn't fit her. Yeah. So I contacted the people and was like, look, I'll drive the two hours if I have to drive it. Right. We need a car. Right. And here we are. Here you Luckily are. they came closer to us. Luckily, so right. and we've already informed many of our families about it. That's an awesome so, thing. Right. Well we wish you the best. We're glad you're here today. We hope Ethan has a good Thank time you. with that. Ethan, are you excited are you about that? <laughs> <That's his daddy. laughs> Ethan's he's like this like, whole oh, camera just... thing. I ain't into it. <laughs> right. Give me my car back. <laughs> yep. He's looking well, we're gonna for work it. on fitting Ethan's seat a little bit more, but you can see great things are going on. Not only did they go to the nationals or the internationals with their right. robot here at Mars, they are doing some remarkable yeah, things out there for kids and needs. <laughs>